just straight up not having fun with this anymore. Kendrick just opened his mouth. By that I mean life in general. But I also mean this big rap beef that's going on. Uh, in case you haven't seen it, and at this point you have definitely seen it, basically everyone in hip hop decided that they hated Drake and they've all been coming for him for months. The first and most important of them being Kendrick Lamar. And it was fun at first, and as of a couple days ago, it's it's become not enjoyable for me. It, it's all it's all turned very weird and ugly. And uh, you know, I miss a month ago or even a week ago when this was not so serious. I mean, here's how not serious I was taking it. I was honestly kind of rooting for Drake. I, I should clarify immediately that this is not because I like Drake or I want him to succeed or that I dislike his enemies. Those of you who watch my stuff know that I like Kendrick a lot and I haven't liked Drake's song in about like six albums or more. So I wasn't rooting for him in this feud out of affection or it being emotionally invested in his life. It's, it's, it's just like the same sad, sick, corrupted way that I root for insane long shots. If you put Glass Joe against Mike Tyson, I root for Joe. This is about to be the most shameful detail I've ever admitted, but I swear to God, I was rooting for Machine Gun Kelly versus Eminem. And that was not because I thought he deserved it. I, I, I just take no pleasure in seeing Eminem destroy another pathetic contender. I, I don't need to see the Chiefs win another Super Bowl. So when I say I was rooting for Drake, I mean like for laughs. Because I, I couldn't imagine how or why it could possibly happen. Seeing Drake beat Kendrick in a rap beef would be like seeing a, a, a dog being elected president. I, I, I root for last place teams. That's what I do. Uh... I am aware that this is not a great analogy. It makes no sense to treat Drake as some kind of lovable underdog. Drake is one of the biggest and most important figures in music of the last 20 years. Every time he releases something new, it puts up gigantic numbers. Literally only Taylor Swift can outdo him on the charts right now. So he's not a lovable underdog, because he's not an underdog. And he's not lovable. He's a weird asshole and everyone knows it. I don't think everyone's coming for him out of jealousy. So I wasn't taking this seriously. I just wanted to see something unexpected and funny happen. And as of me taping this, it is, it's, it's not funny. Like, I, I truly hope that I, YouTuber Todd in the Shadows, am not the first person you are hearing this from. Seriously, please watch more YouTubers than me to get the whole scoop because there are far too many details for me to cover alone. It's, it, this has been going on for months. But here's how I'd summarize it. Drake and J. Cole did a song together last year, and J. Cole made a reference to the big three of rap which is Drake and J. Cole and Kendrick. Love when they argue the hardest MC. Is it Kate Dad? Is it Aubrey or me? We the big three like we started a league. But right Look, I wasn't the one who picked who got to be in the big three. Get mad at the broader hip hop fandom, not me. Kendrick apparently did not like having his name said in the same sentence as those guys, and he put out a diss verse on the song Like That by Future. Motherfuck the big three. Nigga, it's just big me. Nigga, bum. This was really surprising to me. Honestly, this whole thing has seemed a little beneath Kendrick. Like, I don't know why he was getting involved. And that just snowballed into everyone taking shots at Drake. Why is this happening? I don't know for sure, but I, I don't want to dismiss one major possibility, which is money. Like here's what's been going on in the background that's been setting this up. Hip hop had a terrible year last year. Nothing was hitting commercially. Everything about rap felt tired. I like plenty of 21 Savage songs, but I I'm not gonna get excited for a new 21 Savage record. I, I know what he's gonna do at this point. He's gonna say 21, 21, 21. And he's one of the newer big names at this point. Everyone who came after him either fell off or is dead. But at the start of this year, Megan Thee Stallion started kicking things off by making fun of Nicki Minaj and her sex offender husband. These hoes don't be mad at Megan. These hoes mad at Megan's law. <laughs> And suddenly, people were talking about hip hop again. It doesn't seem like coincidence that right after that happened, there's diss tracks everywhere. Chris Brown and Quavo have been desperately trying to get people to notice their own feud that's going on. I can tell you that this has been great not only for the music industry, but for the music content industry. Everyone is feasting on clicks right now, except probably me, because I take too damn long to write. But if I were your stockbroker, I would tell you to invest in livestock futures because beef is doing big, big business right now. Okay, what immediately happened after this is J. Cole tried to diss Kendrick back, immediately regretted it, and gracefully bowed out. Man, that's the lamest shit I ever did in my fucking life, right? 
How many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest motherfuckers to ever touch a fucking microphone? But Drake escalated. I think he had to. J. Cole's not a battle rapper. He shouldn't have gotten involved to begin with. He loses nothing by gracefully taking the L. Drake couldn't afford to say nothing. Drake's record in big rap feuds is one and one. The first, against Meek Mill, he won handily by treating it like a complete waste of time and beneath his notice. He tried the same move against Pusha T and got his ass handed to him. You are hiding a child, let that boy come home. Deadbeat motherfucker playing border patrol. Ooh. Pusha T didn't just insult him, he revealed the existence of a secret child Drake had been hiding. It exposed part of his life Drake didn't want people to know, made him look like a deadbeat dad, and Drake never responded, he just tucked tail and went home. It's not really much I can say big, better than Drake has a baby. I, he won, you know, he won off that. That's important because it explains why Drake can't do that again. He cannot keep running from fights. Like, what are you, chicken? Now, like I said, everyone came at Drake very suddenly. Future, The Weeknd, Rick Ross, Kanye, the fucking chameleonaire had issued a diss track, I wouldn't have been surprised. Like, most of these guys have worked with Drake too. Future released a whole album with him. No new friends, no new friends, no new friends, no, no, no. Yeah, no new friends, no old friends, no friends. P please be my friend. Yeah, it was, it was like watching the assassination of Julius Caesar, just et tu, future A. But most of these guys don't matter. Rick Ross has something to say, who cares? Kendrick is the important one. Kendrick was the first to fire shots, he's the biggest name. But also it's just the contrast. Like in the first song, Drake compares himself to Michael Jackson. Bro, I don't want away from Michael, nigga. Beat it, nigga. Beat it, beat it. And Kendrick shoots back. A prince outlived Mike Jack, nigga. Boom. And that basically sums it up. Drake is the pop star, Kendrick is the artist. That's obviously reductive. All four of those guys had massive hits. All four of them have a lot of respect. Yes, including Drake, believe it or not. And also the analogy isn't perfect. Prince was like in a constant creative frenzy of recording and Michael took forever carefully crafting his stuff. It's the exact opposite for Drake and Kendrick. Drake constantly floods the zone with crap while Kendrick disappears for years. But you know, you, you get the point. And can I say as the, the, the pop reviewer, it's funny that we had a big whole movement called Poptimism to make pop music respected. And even though it basically wildly succeeded, pop is still an insult when you use it to describe other genres. Pop rap is an insult. Uh, I don't particularly care if Drake is pop or if he uses ghostwriters. From what I've heard, a lot of rappers do. But it is true that Drake and Kendrick's approach is completely different. Like those rumors have existed for years. His fans don't care. If it came out Kendrick had ghostwriters, they would wreck him forever because they're not playing the same game. Now, what I was saying it would be funny if Drake won is just because I didn't know what Drake could possibly say about Kendrick. Like what are Kendrick's vulnerabilities? I asked people on Twitter and they said, well, Kendrick worked with Maroon 5. Like, yeah, okay, of course my followers would say that. Uh, I didn't expect Drake to actually go there. You better do that motherfucking show inside the bitty. Maroon 5 need a verse, you better make it witty. Then we need a verse for the Swifties. Tops it is actually pretty funny that Drake, the pop star, has the room to make fun of Kendrick's pop features, which actually are more embarrassing than Drake's. Drake can say, I was on work, you were on Bad Blood, that song fucking sucks. That is one thing Drake can say for himself. So at this point, Drake is getting points just for not immediately conceding like he did for Pusha T, or like Cole did for Kendrick. But still, a jab about Maroon 5 is not gonna be enough. And I, I just didn't see what else could be said about him. Kendrick is a really famous artist, but he's not a celebrity. I, I don't know shit about him. And I know way too much about Drake. Like, I'm not gonna be one of those people who says Drake is talentless or he's never made good music. You can find people who say that. I'm not one of them. I think if you can't tell why he's so famous, you're kidding yourself. But uh, he, he's a worse rapper than Kendrick. He's a worse person than Kendrick. He has tons of vulnerabilities that Kendrick can aim at. And Kendrick came for them all. How many more fairy tale stories about your life till we had enough? How many more black features till you finally feel that you're black enough? He came at Drake for using ghostwriters, for having cosmetic surgery, for allegedly issuing a cease and desist to make Kendrick stop with the disses. And the elephant in the room. <sighs> I, I've never talked about this in my Drake videos because I don't like spreading rumors, especially when they're this serious, but 
You've heard them. I've heard them. We've all heard them. Kendrick was obviously going to bring it up, so let's talk about it. All right. For years, there have been rumors that Drake is Canadian. I'd rather do that than let a Canadian nickel make pot turn in his grave. And you cannot have such an obvious weak point like being Canadian and not expect Kendrick to make fun of it. So he went after that mercilessly. Speak on the family, Crody. It can get deep in the family, Crody. Talk about me and my family, Crody. Someone go bleed in your family, Crody. <laughs> And at this point, it's just a feud about who's the better rapper and, you know, short jokes, Canadian jokes. But what Kendrick really brought to the feud in that track was something you can't fake. Real, genuine hatred. I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk. I hate the way that you dress. I hate the way that you sneak this. If I Sometimes you don't have to hit specifics. This, for me, was the best line in the song. I even hate when you say the word nigga, but that's just me, I guess. Some shit just cringeworthy. You ain't even gotta be deep, I guess. I think we all just had to hear someone say it. Like, why doesn't Kendrick like Drake? He doesn't need a reason. The vibes are just bad. They're bad vibes coming off of Drake. There have been for a long time. It's so weird to remember now, but back when he started, he was clowned on all the time for being soft. He was literally an internet meme. And he handled it like he did not care at all. Like he didn't even notice. And it made him look, I don't know, like hard to mess with. He could be embarrassing and insecure on record and then just play it off in public. And at some point, that... That shit turned, and he got touchy and insecure about shit, leaving weird posts, being strange about women, getting in stupid fights on Instagram. Just over time, he went from unflappable to really, really flappable. But, but at this point, it was still, you know, good to watch. We were all having a good time. It got Kendrick to be fun, which he definitely wasn't on that last album. It got Drake to be interesting. I can't remember the last time I was curious about what he would say next. Like, I, ju I just figured Drake would get at Kendrick for being preachy. I make music that electrify him. You make music that pacify him. I like, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, that's a, that's a speech from Arrested Development ass line. Like, yes, I, I, I know the double entendre, but t to me he sounds like Common talking shit about G-Funk in the 90s. That's where I thought Drake was gonna take this, uh, and he did, but he also took it much further. Uh, and here's where shit gets serious. Like, when Pusha T went after his secret child, it was like Oppenheimer splitting the atom. All bets were off on how personal it could get. Uh, I think Drake thought he had to do it because it had been done to him. So, he exposed shit about Kendrick. He accused Kendrick of beating his wife. They hired a crisis management team to clean up the fact that you beat on your queen. And it would be remembered as one of like the hardest diss tracks that's ever been made. If not literally a half hour later, Kendrick responded with one of the darkest songs I've ever heard in my goddamn life. You lied about your son. You lied about your daughter, huh? You lied about them other kids that's out there hoping that you come. You lied Where he basically addresses all of Drake's family members to tell them that he's a sex trafficking pedophile. Your son's a sick man with sick thoughts. I think niggas like him should die. Him and Weinstein should get fucked up in a cell for the rest they life. Christ. I guess this is why he warned bitches not to kill his vibe. Th that song is honestly like a, a harrowing experience. I, I felt like I was watching Hereditary. The very next day, Kendrick had uploaded yet another diss track, which said basically all the same things but with a dance beat under it. Say Drake, I hear you like I'm young. You better not ever go to sell black one. I, I was almost relieved, honestly. Meet the Grams was haunting. Like, I went to bed sad. And then I had a sad nightmare. You know, where like, it's so sad you wake up in the middle of the night. And the, and then this new one, Not Like Us, put a guilty smile back on my face. Why you trolling like a bitch, ain't you tired? Trying to strike a chord and it's probably A minor. And it's funny because this is basically gonna be the hit of the summer, it looks like. They're already playing it on the radio and stuff. The beat is from DJ Mustard. This is like the first diss battle I've ever seen where the producers were hugely important. Like, I think I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Having friends is a skill. It's a musical talent. The part I love most is they need me more than they hate me, so they never take shots. I got everybody on safety. I can the fact that everyone, including the big producer, seems to hate Drake means that not only is he getting called a pedophile, everyone's going to be bouncing to the sound of him getting called a pedophile all summer. But this is the part where I, I, I just stopped enjoying it and I wanted it to stop. Like, a diss battle, you know, it's just supposed to be about how good the roast is. It doesn't matter whether it's true. It's not supposed to matter if it's literally true that your mom is so fat that when she gets on the scale it says, to be continued. 
But here we're getting to allegations where th th this does matter a lot. Like, I don't know if it's true that Kendrick ever put hands on his woman. I, I hope it's not true. I have no reason to believe it's true. I only have Drake's accusation. And Drake hurt his credibility a lot on that track by including a whole lot of no you. Like, no you have ghostwriters. No you issued a cease and desist. No you are bad to women. It doesn't sound legit. Meanwhile, Drake does have a whole lot of creepy behavior around women, including underage ones. He came up to me and he was like, hi, I'm-, I'm Look, all this stuff went off starting years ago when it turned out that Drake was trading texts with 14-year-old Millie Bobby Brown. Like, and since then, it's basically just been taken as an article of faith that Drake is doing something shady with underage girls. It makes me uncomfortable to talk about because I have seen the evidence it seems to me like it's a lot of smoke, but not a lot of fire. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be out here apologizing for rich, powerful men. I know they have many ways to hide their crimes, and I have seen smoke turn into fire many times, so I won't be surprised if it happens again. But I have also seen detective internet mob get it wrong or blow things out of proportion a bunch of times. Like, I, I know he has like a ton of sus behavior and there needs to be a lot of close eyes on that shit, but just, just for me, if I'm gonna accuse him of the worst crime known to man, what I need is like an actual human person to say, this man did something abusive and or illegal to me. And I mean like the person it happened to, not a bunch of randos on the internet. But whether or not it was true, like people just kind of wanted it to be true and they didn't want it to be true about Kendrick. And that, so he basically won the second he pulled that card out. And especially because Kendrick seemed like he believed it and Drake could not say the same. So in terms of the feud, Kendrick immediately won. Anyone who tells you otherwise has a Drake body pillow that they kiss at night. Like you can point at things that Kendrick got wrong or missed on, but Kendrick had already won before the match even started because he's feuding because he wants to and Drake is feuding because he has to. Kendrick won because everyone wanted him to win because everyone's fucking tired of Drake. And while I was writing this, Drake finally released his response where he finally denied everything for real and it, it sounds like damage control. He sounds punch drunk. Like he wants to say that at the very least he went out swinging. It sounds to me like he just wants to walk off the field rather than going out on a stretcher. Something that allows him some level of dignity so that people still listen to his next album. They hired a crisis management team And honestly, it, it, it just feels really crappy to me. Like, I'm pretty sure Drake will survive. Less sure than I was last week, but if he does, then, then, then what then? He puts out another 40-track album, his fans eat it up, and we, and we just move on? And we're like, haha, remember when Kendrick called him a pedophile? Boom. Roasted. You burnt. Like, I don't want to sound like a buzzkill or a panty waste. Like, these things used to end with people dying, but I don't know, this all leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Like, if either of these things are true, it changes my relationship with both of their music. And if nothing happens, then what the fuck was the point? What right does Drake have to lie on Kendrick's wife and or out her as a victim when she didn't ask to be outed? What right do either of them have to act like they care about domestic abuse or sex crimes when they both worked with confirmed abusers? I realize I'm part of the circus too. I made this whole video. We've all had fun with this, but I feel guilty. Like I found this clip of Drake talking about why he never released his response to Pusha T. It was like on his vinyls beat. And I just found myself saying things that like one seemed really out of character just cause I was like really deeply invested in the situation and getting very angry. Um, and saying things that I, didn't, I don't know if in two years I'd want to hear myself say. And like, what happened to that guy? What, that guy sounds wise. But I can feel the situation is getting exhausting to everyone. I think the music part of this is done at least, and then I guess we'll see what's about to happen next. But this situation has changed multiple times just in the couple of days I took to write this. A new track could drop at any moment. So I'm just gonna record a contingency ending just in case more happens. <sighs> So then, on Tuesday, Kendrick tricked Drake into eating his own parents. Oh my god! Yeah, 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 yeah. I made you eat your parents! <laughs> Situation's not funny, but I'm still cracking jokes about it. <sighs> Biggest hypocrite of 2024. Yes, I can. For little girls. 
four little girls get bigger every day. Thank heaven, 